Welcome to a video about a fantastic solo played by Moses Rosenberg on the standard China Boy. And if you've watched the previous video, you know that this is kind of a continuation of that video. Because there is a version on YouTube of both Moses Rosenberg and Paul de Schaefer playing this tune. And both play great solos in the same style, the, the so-called Dutch style. I explained more about that in the previous video, but they have found their own niche inside that style. And I thought it would be interesting to transcribe and learn both solos so I can see, and you can see also the, the way that they mold the Dutch style to suit their own personalities. So if you haven't watched the previous video, then you can watch that one right after this one. So you can check out Paulus Shaver solo, but for now let's Continue with the first phrase of Moses Rosenberg's solo. <laughs> On major chords, Moses really loves to emphasize either the major 7 or the 9, and we will see that a little later on in the solo as well. This phrase starts with emphasizing the 9 of F major. And the 9 is the G, so he goes straight to the G, plays it a couple of times to really emphasize the notes, and then he continues with emphasizing the major 7. There's that major 7, and the emphasis on that major 7 is achieved by both landing on that note, but also by that really tasty slide. Slide from a one fret below and really make it a, a slow slide. So don't do, but really make that slide something that stands out. Then uh, another major seven arpeggio to the major seven again, and ending on the six. So it's emphasizing the the 9 and the major 7, but the last note of that phrase is the 6, which is, well, you could say it's gypsy jazz, but it's something that happens in a lot of jazz solos, also in bebop solos, Chad Parker was very fond of it, but of course Django Reinhardt was also very fond of it, and many gypsy jazz players like to end their phrases on the 6. And then we arrive at the second phrase. It starts with a standard gypsy jazz lick for a dominant chord, in this case D7. So first a chromatic approach to the D, and here's the lick. So this phrase is the basis or the start of many gypsy jazz licks. For instance, you could continue like this. So Moses just repeats the phrase twice. But that works, because the first time the note on the beat is a D, right? And now it's a C. If you would repeat it again, you could go to a B, so you would get... And then you could go back to a C. So you could repeat this lick many times and still keep it interesting. Here we have one repeat. And then he has to go to G7, so he approaches the, the third of G, a B, with two chromatic notes, 
this thing you could say is also a typical Gypsy Jazz device for both uh, G7 but also D minor. Uh, Paulus is using the same lick in his solo. Maybe in a different way, but it's still there. And Moses repeats this G7 D minor device four times. Two, three, four. So this F, you could say, is part, maybe part of the next phrase, but I put it here because if you want to use this device yourself, this is a nice way to end it. Now to continue this device, or this lick, Repeating is one option. You could repeat it a couple of times, especially in this tune, because the G7 lasts four bars. But you could also take a look at Paulus Shaver solo, where he uh, continues to lick in two different ways. The first time he does something like this, playing this F major sharp five at the end of it. And the second time he has a longer continuation, he does something like this. So study all possibilities, repeating it, uh, and the first ending, the second ending, and then you have a really nice device for dominant chords. Let's go to the next phrase. <laughs> I think this is a great 2-5-1 lick, and especially when the chords underneath it are these chords, which in this case is G half diminished, C7, F. So it's a 2-5-1 with a 2 being a half diminished chord. But Moses is outlining that half diminished chord with this standard fingering for half diminished arpeggio. You could also say it's B flat minor 6 arpeggio, but that's the same thing, it's just an inversion of G half diminished. Now we're on C7 and he plays. So that is something that really fits on C7, but it also would fit on F itself. It's basically outlining the major 7 and the 9. So you could either say, well, that's something for C7, but you could also see, say Moses is resolving that B flat minor 6 arpeggio directly into a F major sound. It doesn't really matter what you think of it, it's just a great lick that you should learn and which you can also play on regular 2-5-1s. Yeah, there will be a clash if it's G minor with this D flat, but it resolves very nicely, so you can get away with it and it's just a, a nice, you could say it's a nice color. So here we have another way of playing F major 7 arpeggios. Moses really loves to play when he plays that arpeggio in two octaves, the first octaves would always end with... So again, having that major 7 and a 9, and then continuing with another major 7 arpeggio. And he stops now on the 5th. Why? Because he needs to go to the bridge, and he needs to have some kind of E flat 7 phrase in there, and then he plays... So this is the same phrase we just saw on D7 which I called a standard Gypsy Jazz Lake for dominance. So here we have another example on E flat 7. Now watch this resolution. What's happening there? He resolves to the major 7 on A flat and ending on the 9. Like I said, Moses really enjoys or likes the sound of that major 7 and 9 on major chords. And I have to say, it sounds great and it is something that really identifies Moses. Not many people are doing it the way he does it. Of course, there are people playing that major 7 that 9, but he really emphasizes those notes, and it gives a very, I would say, within the Dutch style, it's a, it's a modern sound. I would associate it more with Wes Montgomery or George Benson than uh, Django, but the mix of it is what makes it special. So you get this Gypsy Jazz Lick, and now we get this 9, major 7, 9 thing. Great stuff. Let's go to the next phrase. Here we have a combination of a couple of ideas we've seen before. So the chord is A flat and he plays that 
A flat major seven arpeggio with that major seven and a nine again. Here we have the major seven nine, and then again the major seven arpeggio, ending on the major seven. Now this leg down, and ending this time on the six. So not on the major seven or the nine. I think he also felt it was time to have a different color there because he just played both on the F major and on the beginning of the A flat major a, a lot of emphasis on that major seven and nine. So now he chooses to end on the six. So you get back to that we could say Django flavor, but but but, but many people like that six. But it's a different flavor from that major seven nine. <laughs> It's really a very attractive way of playing the bridge of this tune, but the bridge is basically all A flat. Yeah, you can play some E flat seven there. The rhythm section could play A flat, E flat, A flat, E flat seven. But if you solo on it, you mostly think about A flat major. So you have to be creative with the way you do that. Now, Paulus was playing lots of one, three, five patterns, stuff like this. Check that out, it's in the previous video. But Moses is making it interesting by having this different emphasis on color tones. Major 7, 9 and 6. Let's go to the next phrase. It starts with a, I would say, typical Moses Rosenberg lick, this one. It's again going to the major seven of the major chord. But this, especially with that slide there from the G sharp to the A. Typical Moses. I think he's the only one playing that lick like this. So it's C7 to F. So it's a, it's a simple thing, right? But it's something that really identifies Moses for me. And this phrase as well. It's a A minor arpeggio. Right? And it fits really nicely on F major, and it again emphasizes the major seven, ending on the on the fifth. Really nice stuff, and I would say you have to practice this in all keys because this is just a an easy to play but really cool sounding five one lick. So let's say we play it um, to let's say we play it to C, then we get. Right, it starts basically on the flat nine of the seven chord, so G7, starts on the A flat. We get the slide to the third of C, and then the major seven. This is an E minor arpeggio. Great stuff, and he also plays this lick in the next chord, but he starts on a different beat. So you get another rhythmic feel with the phrase, which is also great, but that's for another video. Let's go to the next phrase. The chord here is G sharp diminished. Oh, you could play it like this. And it might seem like an odd chord surrounded by all those major chords uh, and those dominant chords. Well, there's one half diminished chord, but that's also an odd chord in, in the mix. But this diminished chord is quite odd. A lot of people don't really know what to play on it. Now, if you want to get away from playing diminished arpeggios, which is also an option, and we will see with Moses, that can sound really great. But if you just want to play something else, the easiest thing to think of is E7 altered. So you think about this sound. You can play some E7 altered stuff, some licks. Fits great on that G sharp diminished. Moses is choosing the more traditional approach by playing diminished arpeggios. And you, you couldn't just play a diminished arpeggio down and up like this. It sounds great. A lot of people do it. Uh, I think uh, Paulus was doing it. He was doing it with uh, uh, tripling the notes. So it's still 
uh, something different from just playing it down and up, right? It's still something special. Now Moses has a couple of devices of making it sound very, I would say, almost mysterious. And the first way of doing it is right here. And it's a great way of playing diminished arpeggios. The first one only goes four notes down from an F to a G sharp. One, two, three, four. But now it's five notes. One, two, three, four, five. So the first time it's only four notes down from an F to a G sharp. And then the second arpeggio is five notes down from a D to a lower D. And it might seem like that is a simple thing to think of, but it actually isn't. I've never seen it before, uh, although it might seem obvious. I've never played it myself like this before. I would maybe just play it down up like this. Or do that E7 stuff. But this way is great and I wanna, I wanna use it myself as well. And now I have to resolve back to F. And this actually is a standard Gypsy Jazz uh, lick for major chords. So he does. And this thing, I would say it's a Stochola Rosenberg lick. And Moses really pulls the most he can out, out of this phrase, right? Maybe Stochola would play twice, maybe three times. But Moses plays it for, I don't even know how many bars, but the ending of the first chorus and also the, the first five bars of the second chorus, something like this. You will find it's not easy to play because the coordination of, of sliding your finger back and forth and your pick, making that in sync, it, it's, it's challenging. And you could say, well, why don't you just play? And that might seem easy to do at first, right? If you play it slowly, just... But you will find it's even more challenging because it's very hard to judge when you have to play one, two, and then also slide because you need to slide back to one to play this high C. <laughs> Very tricky, so I actually also prefer just going back and forth. So the trick is to have a light touch on the string, especially on it, so that you can easily slide back and forth. Don't press too hard. You shouldn't do that anyway, but especially not here. And really focus on that high C as your anchor point. So you get a high C and then you get a slide, not picked, and then you start picking. So be aware of this, of this part, so down on the high C and then down on the low C and a slide. And then up uh, stroke on the next C. Maybe practice that separate with a metronome, like one, two, three, four. And you practice this separately. One, two, three, four. And then you combine them. Maybe put a rest in between those elements so you can think about it. You have time to think about it. Something like this. So you have two elements and then you take the rest away. You do it slowly and you try to make it a continuous thing. Then you start speeding it up. Of course, be careful not to rush. So use a metronome and take it slow and then it will get better and better. I also had trouble with it. If you have trouble with it, uh, take solace in the fact that I also had trouble with it, especially doing it as many times as Moses is doing it in a row without messing up. So yeah, by the way, check out the original video and you can see him do it uh, flawlessly without any effort. Link in the description. That was it for this video, the first course. And of course, there is a second course. And per usual, I will make an exclusive video about that second course, just like this, in this style, for my patrons over at patreon.com. So take a look, and if you join there at the 10 euro tier, you can get access to that video, which I will make later this week. And at the 5 euro tier, you can download the tab that you saw on screen today, and also many other tabs, and there's even a highest tier of 28 euros, and then you will get access to thousands of pages and videos, which I made exclusively for my patrons. Lots of stuff, enough stuff to practice a lifetime, 
for both you and me, because I, I make videos about lots of uh, topics, but I can't remember everything. So often I go to my own Patreon to look back at all the videos and, and discover some links that I was practicing at the time that I forgot, and then I practice them again. So I know from my own experience that the Patreon is a great resource to learn uh, jazz licks and concepts in multiple styles, from Gypsy Jazz to Bebop and beyond. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all that good stuff which all YouTubers need. And I will see you in the next video right here on YouTube or perhaps on my Patreon. Bye!